After dozens of short-term earthquake forecasts, the first ever public long-term earthquake forecast has met success in every metric. We begin with the premise. Magnitude 7 earthquakes have a long-term average of one every 20 days, but most times, they are grouped into upticks of multiple events in a week or two or a flurry in a month, and separated by up to four months or more without one. These upticks are what we're aiming for, so nearly four weeks after a magnitude 7 at the end of 2018, more than the expected wait time of 20 days, no other magnitude 7 events had occurred, and statistics said Earth was due any day now, at least according to the math. We felt that was an appropriate time to forecast a longer wait, even longer than we'd already waited, and the time when the events, plural, would in fact occur. We will now replay our forecast made on January 24th, 2019. You can watch the original at the link provided below the video. Good evening, folks. This video is meant to quickly summarize the science behind the Sun and Megaquake connection, to go over the last uptick's connection to it, and to forecast the next uptick in magnitude 7 earthquakes or higher. This is the solar polar magnetic field data set, north, south, and combined in yellow, otherwise considered as the total polar magnetic field action to which Earth is subject. The larger oscillations over longer periods of time are following the sunspot cycle inversely, and the shorter frequencies are annual variation based on Earth's orbital tilt of 7 degrees from the solar equator. The work that started this all, including the eventual location forecasting with the Global Electric Circuit, an emission parameter on the seismoelectromagnetic satellite connected the magnitude 8 earthquakes in history to the peaks and polarity reversals of these fields. Here is just the last couple of years. You may recall that last year's spike, positive in blue, saw the 8.2 in Mexico, and this year's peak back in August saw the 8.2 deep beneath northeast Oceania. At that time, our podcast on the website began weeks of looking forward to the next uptick that would correlate with a polarity reversal of the solar polar fields, where the yellow line crosses the baseline there on the right, if not for a magnitude 8 event, for the next uptick in magnitude 7 events for sure. It is time to try publicly forecasting the next one, not just on our website podcast. And given the average of 90 days between peaks and reversals, that would put the best guess centered around March 7th for the solar polar field peak to the negative. While we similarly saw that lone magnitude 7 event in October of last year, that obviously does not constitute an uptick and we could get a lone magnitude 7 event before we come to the actual negative peak. But we define these upticks as two magnitude 7 events in one week, three in one month, or if it's high magnitude 7 range or above. And so best guess right now for that uptick is somewhere between late February to mid-March. But with the caveat overriding that, it will be the solar polar field's actual activity that will determine when the next uptick occurs. If the uptick falls earlier or later than the forecasted time here, the prediction is that the solar polar field's data will reflect that it had a faster or slower shift to its peak, whichever would apply. So, a quick doing of the math. We had already waited 26 days at the time of forecast, longer than expected, and we said we had about a month to go at least which is more than the entire average waiting period longer. But not only was the quiet forecast, followed by the actual uptick in magnitude 7 earthquakes, but that the data in the model would bear that out as the peak of SPF strength in the negative. Otherwise, it could all just be luck if the earthquakes timed up. Obviously, we could not identify any uptick that occurred until it had ended for some considerable amount of time and we re-enter the calm. It is now 50 days since the last magnitude 7 earthquake, so we can look back at the only two events in the last 113 days, pick them out as the uptick, and they occurred only 6 days and 23 hours apart. They occurred in the last week of February and March 1st, respectively, so we now must ask if the solar polar fields data is showing the same thing. This is 2018 until the end of March 2019, and we can see that negative peak on the right side there where my cursor is. That's February 25th, 2019, splitting those two magnitude 7 earthquake events down the middle and coming 10 days earlier than expected, within the forecast timeline, and indeed, when the earthquake uptick 
actually occurred. I have gone ahead and plotted here all the magnitude 7 events and higher during that same period. Not exactly one every 20 days, is it? Those green ones, by the way, are the two predicted in this case. The periods that give concern are the peaks positive and negative, and the polarity reversals where they cross the baseline in the middle. Not all fingers are thumbs, but all thumbs are fingers. Not every significant solar polar field's point winds up releasing energy, but when this significant of energy does get released, it tends to be during those times. That is what our papers are about. You can read them and much more about the short-term earthquake forecasting at quakewatch.net. Our first attempt ever to do this was just for our website members at suspiciousobservers.org. But now, the first official public test of this long-range model is a success. We should have enough data to forecast the next series soon, although it is noteworthy that the kind of solar activity we are seeing right now can produce those rare out-of-phase events, usually just one of them, not an uptick. Be safe, everyone.